Okay, I'm at the um, Seven Stars tonight, uh, next door to the legendary police of Virgin, and uh, I have with me a Bjorn lead vocalist of legendary Scandinavian metalist saw work. Uh, welcome to the B-Ship and Sunday Rock Show Bjorn. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, um, let's go right back to the very beginning, saw yeah. work. You've had a long and fairly illustrious history. Mm. Uh, Briefly take us through the story of the band, you know, kind of how you got together. You know, did you know each other prior to soul work, or...? Um, well, basically how it all started was uh, back when I was in uh, high school, and um, I guess that was around uh, 95, 96, and um, a guy named Peter Witchers um, uh, went to the same school. I, I didn't know him since before, but one day, because back then I had uh, long black hair and, and like leather jacket with logos all painted over it, believe it or not. But um, I guess he, he uh, realized that I'm, I was into metal, right? So he, he came up to me one day and was like, oh, hey, um, I'm about to start this band. You seem like you like metal, so you, you want to sing? I was like, ah, I'm, I'm a guitar player, but, you know, why not? Let's try it out. But anyways, uh, yeah, so um, Peter, he came up to me and asked me if I wanted to sing in this band he was about to start, and I, uh, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a guitar player, but you know, I'm sure it sounds interesting, because I was kind of, you know, I, I liked singing, it was just like I kind of ended up playing guitar for some reason, but, um, so we tried that out, and it was a bunch of people that he really didn't know either, so it was all like kind of new people, like, uh, that was getting to know each other. Um, so that's when we started out, 95, 96, around there, and, uh, and, and produced our first demo uh, around that time as well. Because you weren't called Soul at that time. No, it was an inferior breed. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think we changed our name on, on the second demo, and that, that was the demo that... Why well, did we change the name? Was it... Uh I don't know, Inferior Breed just seemed like, uh, I remember I thought back then that it sounded so typical death metal or something, you know. I was going to say, you got the carcass because of the, cause of the, uh, the soul work was the carcass connection then, no? Yeah, yeah, hard work, because that was, that was, uh, that was a big album for us, and, uh, you know, me growing up, so I just kind of liked how it looked, like the short word and like the work, and then... We found the word soil and we put it together, and it's like it's like a dirty work, you know, something yeah. like that. And I'm, you know, it's kind of, um, yeah. So I mean, we decided to go with that. And uh, a couple of years down the line, we realized, you know, we came to to America. And I was like, y'all farmers? And that's that's what they asked us. But you know, but then again, I, I think it is. You know, it's it's been a pretty uh, rough job. You know, it's been a long road, and and it's been a pretty dirty job at that as well. You know, it's uh, so I guess it was us really picturing building something from the ground and up, right? So, yeah. so I guess it was kind of a motivating name in, in, in that sense. So when you started, what was the kind of your mutual influences that kind of pulled you together? You know, where did you start from musically? Well, I mean, we were in, in, into the whole, you know, Gothenburg, the first wave of the Gothenburg scene and also the Stockholm scene with Entomb, Dismember and, 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 you know, Grave, all that stuff. We were into that. Uh, at the same time, there was another album that came out that really changed everything and that was City was Trapping in the Lab. Because that was something different. We've never heard anything like that. With kind of like the open chords, and more like atmospheric, and I think that's that really inspired us to to take to to a new level. You know, creating something different instead of just like playing kind of Gothenburg riffing, kind of even though that was still really cool and interesting and all that bloody. So we we wanted to kind of we got inspired from that album, and um, so I, I think we had. Uh, we, we wanted to have something unique from the very beginning, we, you know, instead of just you know, being a part of, mm. of, of that scene. You've always had a distinctive sound right in the early days, haven't you, that's going to set you apart from some of your... Yeah, rock. I guess. And I mean, we've always had kind of the rock and roll element in there as well, like the blues here kind of stuff. And I, you don't hear that a lot in, in you know, the melodic, melodic death metal scene in that no, sense. Um, your most recent album, Living Infinite, um, I was reading some of the reviews. Now... Some of the old school death black metal bands have been mm. a bit down on it. Oh, really? They're accusing you of being, being setting out because it's kind of more Even this new one? Huh? Even this new one? In here, yeah. Here in England? No, yeah. That's interesting. Um, well, I've read in sort of like oh, yeah. reviews from all over the world. Yeah. Personally, I think it's your strongest work yet. You yeah. know, it's a very brave double album yeah. concept work. 
Um, is this a kind of conscious new direction you're heading in, or is it just the way it's evolved? I guess in a way, it's, that's the way it's been, you know, evolving in a sense. It's a, we never really talk about what we're supposed to do, or uh, I guess that, that's what everyone says. But <laughs> you know, it, it really that, that's what how it works for us. We can never because we're six very different characters, come from very different backgrounds as well, and somehow we found a mutual mission. You know, where we, when I go with the music, and we don't really have to talk about it. But it's then again, we we. There was a mutual feeling that we wanted to bring back some of the uh, melancholic uh, vibes that we had on, on the four first albums, and uh, we, felt, we felt that with, with Peter, you know, he, he got really into kind of like the American scene, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was really really good at, at, at doing that. You know, there's some great riffage, and there's nothing wrong about sounding American, right? But we felt that we kind of missed out a little bit on the Scandinavian kind of. And uh, that, that was something we wanted to bring back. And I, thought, I thought we got a little bit on Panic Broadcast, but especially this new one. There's uh, has that feeling. You know, like, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not all bad reviews. I mean, there's a few. There's lots no, of no, it's, it's definitely well, been good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's um, been good. I was, yeah. It's just interesting how because I, I felt that a lot of people that you know didn't really like the previous album and the one before that and thought it sounded too American. They really appreciated this this new mm. one. You know, so. Um, well, now we're joined by Dave, the, David, David, and you are the guitarist. The guitarist, well, take a seat and join us, man. Um, now, uh, why is, is Scandinavia got such a, an affinity to metal? I mean, you've got from everything, from you know, some of your more like glammy bands like mm. Raw Republic and Crazy Lips, right through to you. Yeah. You know, like. Um, okay, uh, may have been bands like Venom and Warfare that invented the black metal stuff mm. over in the UK, but it was the Scandinavian bands like Bathory that took yeah. it up and run with it. Yeah. Why do you think that there's such an intense metal scene over Norway, Finland, Sweden, and that kind of thing, yeah? Um, oh, it's always the hardest question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the one reasons probably that there's not much to do there, so people tend to get a bit extreme. We don't have the sunny climate or the, like, <laughs> and our, our culture is, I mean, our culture has been very supportive of young bands. So I guess, like, everyone in Scandinavia has, at least in the past, got the chance to develop their thing, you know, more. Because yeah, I know on the radio show, literally, literally every week I'm getting a new band out of Scandinavia even now, and I've been doing this years, yeah? Mm. Um, do you kind of feel, not to take pressurised, but have you got any relation with the new up and coming bands from sort of like Sweden and Norway and that? Or? Um, not really. I mean, I used to, I, I guess I, I used to be more into the whole scene, you know. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm just, you know, uh, slicing everything off. I, 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 if I find something that I really like, I, I really promote it in any way I can, right? But, um, it's kind of hard to keep uh, keep up w w with the scene because when we signed with a the band, there was a lot fewer bands out there, you know. Mm. But now, so many labels, so many bands, and it's really hard to keep track. And it's also hard to get through. And unfortunately, a lot of bands get signed that you know that are it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like it's always been, you know, with image and everything, you know, mm. and. Uh, it's always been about the music for me, even though I, I think like, the ultimate thing it, scenario is if you have everything, you know, the image and good songs and a great live show and, and can play. Right, so you're on tour, you've been on tour for a while, and your tour's going on for a while. Yeah. How's the tour going overall? You Well, it's been good because we uh, we haven't played, we started in Spain, we did Madrid in uh, Barcelona, so we haven't played there for uh, probably... I don't know, six, seven, eight years. Uh, so that was a good thing coming back there, and, uh, and uh, it was a really good start of the tour. And then we played uh, Luxembourg for the first time since '98, so it was about time. Obviously, that's going to collect a lot of people from Belgium and, and, and France as well. Mm -hmm. uh, There's only a few people from Luxembourg, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was a great show as well. And then we played uh, uh, Milan as well. 
really, really good. And uh, then um, two nights ago, Paris, which was a, a grand return, I must say, because you know we haven't played Paris for a while. Played there in 2008, and uh, promoter ran away with the money. <coughs> Yeah, so uh, it, it was actually good to come back, and you know that was obviously not the fans' fault, but I, I guess it kind of you know screwed things up a little bit. But mm. then we came back, and it was it was a great great show. So you just thought of your UK leg? Where are you yeah. going off to Bristol for night? Uh, was it Manchester tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manchester, yeah. And then, then London, and then mm-hmm. Wales. Yeah, and I mean, where to after that? You. Uh, so it's five shows in England, and then it's just one Dutch show, and then we're supposed to record a DVD show in Finland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so it's a pretty short tour. So, so you're not like going off to Spikes and Canada and Japan this time around then? No, we did, we did a lot of that last year. We did nine weeks in the st- in North America with two days off. Mm. That was the longest tour we've yes. ever done. Do you find that sometimes when you're doing these massive great big long tours, I mean, I interviewed... Um, well, back before Christmas, the Devil Wears Prada, and they've been on the road for nearly a year. Yeah. And those guys, okay, it's coming towards the end of the end of the trek. They'll do in Europe, then going back for a couple of months off. Yeah. But those guys were shattered. <laughs> do you find that it's especially these great big long sort of US and Canadian tours? Do you find it's very draining on you physically and emotionally? Yeah. The last one, last spring. Yeah, that was the nine week tour. That was like the shows were good. But, but I mean, apart from the shows, you were like for the last couple of weeks, you're just <laughs> miserable, <laughs> yeah. sleeping and being miserable. Yeah. So, but do you still get a big kick out of road work? And yeah, we do. And I mean, uh, I think because uh, you, you, you do see a lot of bands out there that you know, especially the ones that actually made it, and uh, that's been around for a long time. It, it almost feels like corporate metal, you know, when you watch them. You know, it's like kind of like a machine. You know, mm. I feel. I like to think that <laughs> even you know we're we're still a you know fairly big band right but uh, we we're not up there really and uh, I would still like to think that if we were one of those big bands we would still have that chemistry on stage and make it a show and I think we're one of the few bands out there in that metal scene in that genre that have a slight rock and roll feel too on stage. It's not, you know, your average just, you know, <laughs> kind of go through the songs and that's it. It's, 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 it's still quite spontaneous. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, and well, you, so I'll we'll go through the list of uh, what I came out of some of the people you've uh, gigged with in the past. Anthrax, Zylade, Dying, Kill Switch Engage, Cannibal mm. Corpse, Unearth. Mm. It's a basically a who's who of the kind of heavier end of the spectrum. Is there anyone that you particularly enjoyed gigging with? Who's the kind of one thing that said, yeah, we had a good time with those guys? And Oh, yeah, there's been a lot of them. Um, I mean, we had a great tour with Children of Bodom in, in 2003. That, I guess that that was one of our like, first like bigger tours. That was That's when Children of Bodom was really, you know, uh, the biggest. Well, I mean, they're still big, but... Ooh. They were kind of hyped back then, but um, and then we we toured with Killswitch and Lamb of God in the States doing an arena tour. That was pretty cool too. We know those guys very well, so that's always great fun. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I mean, it, it's, it's we usually connect pretty good with, with uh, you know the bands on the road. There's only a few examples where it's just been ah, not really feeling this. Yeah. yeah. And um, like I said, you played, you know, virtually every continent you can play. You know, haven't you over the years? Mm. Including places like South America and East Asia. We haven't played South America. We haven't played, we only played, played Mexico City and that's oh, right. it, in that yeah. kind of corner of the world. So, so. you've uh, yet to go down to Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Is that something you want to do at some point? Because they've got a crack yeah, coming yeah. up down yeah, there. Yeah, probably. It seems to be pretty intense, you know, scheduled when you know, fly every day, no sleep. And that's kind of like one of those things when you get a little bit older, it's like, oh, you need your sleep, you know, mm. in a different, different way, you know. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a, it's a place we would like to go, you know, because we got so many offers for the years, and I frankly don't have like uh, any clue why we haven't really been there yet. So it's uh, that's definitely something we need to cover. But then again, we've been to we've been to Siberia and Russia, <laughs> no Siberia, we've been to Malaysia and mm. all kinds of ran- random places. So, so is there yeah. any, what's the kind of best places you've toured and the worst places that you? You know, you've ever played any real hell holes? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but like in the U.S., when you do long tours in the U.S., you, you're bound to end up in some 
nine shows. Along the way. Yeah, yeah, if you do nine nine yeah. shows in Texas on, on, on one tour, that's uh, yeah. that's going to be. Uh, are there nine places to play in Texas? Oh yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not all of them are that. Probably, really no, nothing. Place, you know, I'm not going to you know bash Texas here, well, but you know it's, it's usually very fun and, and like it. Houston is always great, Dallas and San Antonio, but then we also play some other Tyler, Texas, and Beaumont, Texas. People that were there, great, but it's like why? Why do we, you know, do those shows? It's kind of yeah. random. So on the other, on, on the sort of flip side of the same coin, what's the places that you really look forward to going to play? Uh, the best place in the U.S. is like the the big cities in the US and Canada, the great from Australia, mm -hmm. it's always fun to Australia, yeah, once you get there, it's actually really, really good. Um, yeah. I mean, well, well, we usually go there when it's it's not too bad. We haven't really been there, you know. Uh, we went there, when was that? In uh, October last yeah. year? So it was kind of, I guess, that makes it spring there. Yeah, yeah that was really nice. Ah, cool. yeah. And the European summer festivals. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you, so I notice that you're drinking some of our local, local ale. Mm -hmm. Do you try and sample the beers from around the world when you're playing? Yes, and yes. That's um, one of those favorite, um, one of my favorite hobbies on tour is, is to try out new beers. You know? So, what's the best beer that you've come across? You know, can you give uh, a recommendation for, because I know that some of my listeners are kind of, you know, real ale and... There's been yeah, a lot of you know, what I should have done is to, to you know take a picture and keep keep records of everything I've been drinking. Maybe that would just be scary to be honest. I don't know, but it um, also depends on like the, the setting. Like sitting yeah. here drinking English ale, it feels quite bright. I mean, it feels yeah. 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 I mean, it yeah. makes the whole thing. Okay, sense. so what's the so you're going back and starting writing writing a new album? Uh, have you got ideas for that already, or do you go in with a complete blank canvas? Well, I personally, I, I got a few ideas, and I'm sure you have maybe yeah. something as well, but uh, not quite there yet, you know, mindset. We still have some touring to do. We're going to do this tour and then summer festivals, and uh, uh, not that many of them, but a bunch. And um, I guess after that, we'll kind of get into that kind of... Do you know where people can catch you at a festival over the summer? Sorry, what was that? You know where people can catch you at oh, festival um, over the summer? Well, we got a few. I know we're doing one in, in that. They're probably not official yet, but so... Uh, I guess Health Fest in France. Health Fest, I guess, is, is official, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be a good one. And, uh, a uh, regular assault in Czech Republic. Yeah, and uh, there's one in Portugal as well. Yeah, I've got some friends go over to Health Fest. They love it yeah. every year, yeah. Okay, um... So, where do you see Saw Work going? Do you think it's going to, you know, because you look back at sort of some of these bands like Deep Purple and Black Sabbath that are still going after 40, 50 years. Can you see in, because you guys have been together over nearly 20 now, haven't you? Over 20. Hmm. Can you see yourself in another 30 years' time there's still been a Saw Work <laughs> going around the, on the circuit? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to, to picture that, you know, uh, 20 years from now. Playing this music live, to, like, you can't really just stand there and be tired. You have to. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's very it's physical. Yeah. So it's going to be quite, but well, that's 30 years, so it's going to be quite and slippers then, is it? And yeah. 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 It depends on which shape we're in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank and um, um, all the best for the gig tonight and all the best for the tour. Next time we're back in town, we'll meet up again and have another chat. All right, sounds good.